From lifestyle focus to dynasties, there are plenty of choices in Crusader Kings 3 that will have a profound effect on your playthrough as you craft a medieval kingdom. But some of the most important choices don't just affect you, but the entire cultural group you belong to. Innovations in culture are what unlock buildings, special succession laws, different crown authorities if you're a feudal or a clan government, or even the ability to convert to feudal if you're a tribal government. So today we're going to discuss innovations and how they work in Crusader Kings 3. To see if this video is for you, we'll be discussing a quick summary of innovations as a whole, dissecting how fascination and exposure work, going into chance and advancement, and then discussing how you can increase progress among the innovations that you're working on. You can jump ahead to any point from the chapters in the timeline and description, and if you need help with any other subject, you'll find a link to my guide playlist in the upper right and at the end of this video. And as always, if you decide to pick the game up after watching this, please feel free to use my link in the description. You'll simply receive a Steam key that you'll go ahead and place directly into Steam. Uh, but I also get a lovely commission, so that's great. And as of the creation of this video, there is a 12% discount going on until October 1st. This uh, might be the last week or so. I mean, we're, uh, we're at September 23rd as of the recording of this. But let's get started on innovations in Crusader Kings 3. And to get us started, we'll load into my favorite save over here in Sicily with the Duke of Apulia. And to discuss innovations, go ahead and bring up this little menu down here in the lower left and we'll see our innovations menu. So we have multiple innovation periods, starting with tribal and then going all the way up here to late medieval. And in order to progress from one innovation period to the next or era, it requires 50% of the previous era. Take a look here, have not discovered at least 50% of the innovations of the early medieval era, missing two. And we can also see from this menu that we are the Sicilian culture on the top up here and part of the Latin group and we are at the bottom the culture head now the culture head is dictated by who has the most counties of that culture in their realm so the ruler of this culture has the most sicilian counties in their realm 15 counties um, if i were to say switch over here to the duke of lombardy lombardy over there um this guy is for example Bavarian and the majority of his land is not Bavarian so he does is not the culture head so it's not always the ruler of a land it's who has the most of a culture in their land so taking a look at the innovations they're also divided up by military civic and then cultural and regional for the most part military and civic operate the same cultural and regional are locked by well culture and region so when we look at military and civic, they're going to be the same no matter what civilization or culture or where you are on the map where you start. Military and civic will always be the same for you. Um, just depends on the level of progress or who uh, has certain innovations depending on which culture you are. Now, the cultural region will be different. So Reconquista here, uh, the Sicilian culture is not present in Iberia. And to be present, either you need nine counties in Iberia are, that are Sicilian or 40% of all Sicilian counties are inside Iberia. And it's interesting because the cultural and regional um, innovations will be active if you have these uh, requirements met. And looking at Reconquista, it's available to you. It says not available to the Sicilians. So if I actually switch characters, we'll go over here to uh, Spain since it's relevant to that. And we'll bring up the innovations. Now, you can see that the culture head right now is Duke Suero, Sanchez of uh, Navarre. And, but I can also click back to early medieval and they get Caballeros and they also have Reconquista as two cultural and regional um, uh, unlocks of innovations because these are allowed for this culture. So um, those are going to be all dependent upon which culture you play and where. So just be really mindful of those when you are playing because they'll be active if you have them and they'll they'll start to accrue um, some progress depending on your current situation but your innovations themselves um, are pretty important right because these are what's going to forge you through each and every era and allow you to do so many things remember like i was saying in the intro certain things are gated and locked to you well take a look at hereditary rule 
This allows me to enact the partition succession law or royal prerogative, allows me to enact the high crown and absolute crown authorities for both clan and feudal governments. Or maybe I want mangonels. Well, you can only do that unless you have the innovations or burrs, which will allow you to do the March feudal contract. Um, these things are pretty important here because outside of what looks like just simply men at arms or the ability to uh, do certain succession laws, it also affects your economy. If I look at communal government here, counties now reach the maximum existing development penalty at 35 development. Every era has an existing development penalty that will increase with this innovation. Take, for example, we'll jump to high medieval. I think it's guilds. No, it's um, urbanization. There it is. Counties now reach the maximum existing uh, development penalty at 55 development. And the way that this works is that it's going to increase the amount, uh, the increase development in county steward task suffers from diminishing returns. The more development a county already has, the more development growth is pe uh, penalized. So you'll start to really not suffer as much diminishing returns, and it shows you exactly which innovations help out with this. So, uh, and we're going to come back to why development is so important when we talk about chance and advancement, but keep in mind right now development is key to not just simply levies and taxes like we talked about in our making money guide but now that we've gotten a, a nice good overview of how innovations work let's jump into fascination and exposure because those are also really important ways to increase your innovations two of the largest driving factors in increasing your innovations progress rate is fascination and exposure now if you are not your culture head, you will not have the ability to change your fascination. You can see these two uh, borders around these two um, innovations. Well, this is the border for a cultural fascination, and this is the border for current exposure. And I can select around and click all over the place as long as we haven't as long as we haven't um, uh, innovated or researched it all the way through. And this is important here, and we're going to go through why in a little bit as to how you can stack these things. But your cultural fascination is dictated by your culture head. Hopefully, that's you. Um, if it's not, you can convert to a local culture and hopefully get the culture head. Or you just have to somehow uh, create enough counties in your realm to outmatch the person who is the current culture head. Now, exposure, on the other hand, is very interesting. Um the way it really works is that you can be exposed via one of two ways for culture exposure. Right now, you can see that we share a realm with the Swabians. The other way to get cultural exposure is actually having anyone within your religion have this actual innovation. So, for example, household soldiers. Let's just assume that the Swabians didn't have this. But you know what? You know who does is... Let's just take a look. Uh, the Castilians. Let's just say that they do. Well... Now, because they are within the Catholic faith, they will give me exposure to household soldiers. You'll notice that this is not every single innovation here. The game seems to choose this at random as far as exposure goes. I have not been able to pinpoint how exactly exposure or how the game decides this is the innovation that you will be given exposure to. Because um, you can see that I don't necessarily share a realm with the Swabians. An ally of mine does. So if you have any inclination to how that necessarily works, please, by all means, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Um, I've kind of dived through this as much as possible, but I've not been able to find out exactly how the game determines which innovation to give you through exposure. But exposure is important because it gives you a static 40% bonus to your chance and a chance and advancement we're going to talk about in just a little bit here but the chance of increasing is extremely important and if i look at our fascination fascination also gets a bonus to chance or gives a bonus to chance so let's take a look here at fascination down right now at 25 percent the base for fascination bonus is 20 percent and then the furthering of that equation is 20 percent plus 2% per your culture head's learning. Take, for example, ours is 2, times it by 2 is 4, plus it to that uh, base, which is 
20. It should be 24, but I think that there is a decimal in there somewhere that I haven't been able to figure out because we can manipulate this in some other ways and it's usually plus or minus one or 2%. So for all intents and purposes though, it's 20% plus the 4% from my learning skill. Now, if I take the fascination and switch it to household soldiers, take a look at our chance right now. It's at 45%. Boom, it is going to go all the way up to 70 because our base chance is five. We're now getting the 40% from exposure and now the 25% from fascination. So this is really important because if you're in the tribal era and you're trying to push the early medieval, you're going to want to have as, as much learning as possible. And we're going to go into how you can increase this innovation rate and your learning and, and things like that at the end of this video. But understanding that exposure and fascination have such a huge impact on the chance to even increase your innovation is huge. Like I said, this is 40% for just the exposure and then 25% for the fascination. So if you want to quote unquote really min max this, you should pretty much always be fast having a fascination on your exposure to try and get that down as fast as possible. But I will say this. You should want to focus on hereditary rule and or royal prerogative as quickly as possible because hereditary rule will allow you to enact the partition law. Remember when we talked about our succession laws, if you have confederate partition, any titles that need to be created will be created for your succession. And when you jump into the high medieval era, you're going to want to get heraldry as fast as possible because this allows for house seniority and high partition. Um, high partition is, is pretty good here because again, a lion's share of it is gonna go to your heir, whereas house seniority, it's gonna go to your oldest member of the house, which isn't the best depending on how, the, how that kind of shakes up for you. So getting to high partition is ideal until you can get all the way over here to primogenitor and then you get primogenitor and it just goes to your oldest child. So those innovations in my mind are always the ones to focus on first but really go about this in the way that you want to role play your kingdom right do you want household soldiers first then do it do you want to get armored horsemen absolutely go for it don't feel like you have to go through hereditary rule and royal prerogative as the ones that will just make sure your realm doesn't fracture you can kind of get around confederate partition if you're clever about managing your claims and titles but now that we've talked about our fascination exposure, let's go into chance and advancement to give you an idea of how innovations actually increase over time. Understanding chance and advancement are crucial in helping to increase your innovations across all of the eras. And when we take a look at this progress bar, we can see that we are 86 out of 100% of the way towards completing the innovation of household soldiers, expected to be discovered in about three years. <clears throat> and it says expected because it's not guaranteed to happen every month. There is a 70% chance to gain 0.56 progress each month. Now, this right here is what I'm calling advancement. Base progress, 0.3, average development of Sicilian counties. <clears throat> so, that the way that uh that um equation works out it's 0.3 obviously plus average county development times 0.02 so that's 13 in my case so 13 times 0.02 results in 0.26 add these two together it's 0.56 that's a lot more arithmetic than I wanted to go into, but I wanted to at least explain how the equation works. I'm just going to simply look at that, that, that value right there. I'm not going to be doing any actual manual adding of my counties, but it's important to understand how that equation works because if I go to development here, I can see all of my counties across the land, 19, 19. These ones are all real, real awesome, right? but 10, 10, 13, 11. So when you're expanding your territory, don't feel like you need to immediately jump them into the culture that you've got if you're already the culture head, because that's going to lower that number if you start to load a ton of lower development counties into your realm. Take, for example, let's just say I, uh, I added like 10 one development counties that's going to tank that number right there so be mindful of it don't feel like you always have to push the culture of the region to your culture it's more important in my opinion to get a religion up to par so that you don't have to deal with as many popular opinion issues from that 
Now, chance is important here. Uh, we've set our exposure and fascination to household soldiers. Well, our fascination to household soldiers. And it always has a base chance of 5%, plus the 40% from exposure. That is a set 40%, always going to be 40 And then fascination, which we've gone over before, but just to recap, which is 20% plus 2% per learning of the culture head. That results in a total of 70%. So it's June 18th. Let's go ahead and unpause this. I'll fast forward it. We're July 1st right now, and it's still at 86. So we won a whole month, and it didn't really change. We'll do it again. There you go. Went up to 87%. So it's just important to realize how innovation works. It's not a set amount that's going to just keep increasing. You have to know that increasing the percentage chance of it is what's really going to push that all the way to the end zone for you. So now that we've talked about chance and advancement, let's dive into how to increase those variables by going over a certain number of, um, I guess, skills and tricks and tips and whatnot to increase your overall innovation growth. Taking a look at our character, just to start off on how to increase your innovation, we can see he's got a, a whopping two learning. Now, the easiest way to increase your innovation progress or the chance is switch your spouse over to patronage. This is going to give you 11 learning. So let's just bring this up one more time because it's fun to do. So right now, we're at 70% chance to gain 0.56 progress per month. Now we're at 93%. That was a 23% boost because we just added 11 learning into the mix. So it's really important to know these things here because you need to know that, okay, if I'm trying to make that jump into feudal, well, I need a lore that has good learning or at least a wife with really awesome learning skill to help boost my learning. In addition, you can also use some lifestyle focuses. So let's jump over to lifestyle. Let's jump over to learning. Now, each one of these focuses can actually help you because each one gives you some learning skill. Um, obviously, scholarship focus is going to give you the most because it also gives you three learning. But it also helps your development growth by 15% per month. And if we look at the scholarship tree, which you don't have to choose, you can go into any one of these trees regardless of the focus you choose. So mind, be mindful of that. But looking at the scholar tree, we get two really important ones. Scientific which increases cultural fascination progress by 30%, 35%, sorry, which is advancement, what I called advancement. We'll look at that in a second. Or, or and, planned cultivation. Increase development in county efficiency by 20%. Now, what that means is, if I go back to my council, this ability is increased development in county. It's going to increase the efficiency by 20%, hopefully helping to um, cut down the time it's going to take to increase the development. So right now, Duke Jordan is doing the County of Salerno. Remember we were talking about how there's diminishing returns on increasing the development in a county? Well, he's probably better off doing it somewhere else. Okay, well, this is 16 years. Well, that's 16 months. Um, I like to focus on increasing the development in my chief personal holdings before I increase them in my um, vassals because this increases my levies and my taxes. But now you see how increasing the control, I'm sorry, the development of a land that is not directly held by your domain is important because it increases your innovation. And that 35% we were talking about is this progress, not this. So you don't choose that scale and immediately get 35% on the progress bar, just so that we're clear here. We're, we're increasing this number right here by 35%, which is huge. That can that can take years off of your innovations, if not months, depending on uh, how much actual chance you've got. So hopefully you guys now understand how innovations work. Um, when I jumped into making this video, I kind of figured it'd be a, a very quick one. It, I'm just gonna go through some stuff, but really innovations come down to so many variables that are inter connected. There's so much stuff in this game is like that. So again, just to kind of recap, focus on learning as much as you can to increase your chance, focus on development as much as you can to increase your advancement, and then choose the um, 
innovations that make the most sense for your playthrough. Don't feel locked into going hereditary rule and then going into royal prerogative because some cultures start with those already completely filled. Go with the ones that you want to play with the most. I do feel like, yes, hereditary rule and royal prerogative are ones you should focus on because getting out of Confederate partition is a huge boon and you don't have to worry about it as much. You're not always playing the game of Thrones, quote unquote. But I just want to let you guys know you really can go however you want with this. And focusing on stuff that makes the most sense for what you need is going to be crucial to you. Like some of this, like Burrs, for, I'm sorry, uh, Battlements, for example, is going to uh, be the thing that allows you to actually further increase your... Go down here. Go to a castle. Like this. Well, I can't upgrade this until we get the Battlements innovation. And duchy buildings can't be made without a specific innovation. And then there are further uh, civic buildings that can't be made without an innovation. Right here, which allows you to have economic buildings. So... Your innovations are extremely important to the growth of your um, realm in a lot of ways that are outside of succession laws. And I think that we get a little too focused on the succession law portion of innovations. So try to dig deep on this and create a plan for yourself that makes the most sense for your playthrough and that you get the things that you want to play with the most. Like I am playing as the Normans, so I really want arch saddles. I want armored horsemen. Or if you're playing as... Um, here we go, we'll go over here to Castile one more time. If you're playing as Castile, then maybe you also want an armored horseman, or a, a armored horseman, which you get through Caballeros. So play through the game, have fun with it, try and choose the innovations that make the most sense for your playthrough, but now hopefully you understand how these innovations can be influenced and manipulated to best serve you. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, all that kind of fun action, but have a good one and take care.